Hey everybody, Sketched Cola here, and I am definitely not hiding in your closet and wondering why you haven't turned around and said hi. New Year, same bad TV shows. I was hoping that now, since we are in 2024, we would have learned from last year's mistakes full of woke propaganda and box office bombs. And maybe, now hear me out here, maybe make something actually enjoyable to watch. But nope, we get Echo. I guess the first red flag is that they released all five episodes in one go on Disney Plus and streaming networks never do that unless they aren't confident in their project. Even Velma only released two episodes a week so imagine how bad Echo must have been if all the higher ups decided to release it all in one go. But is it truly as bad as they say? Let's find out. Oh yeah and spoilers for anyone who cares. <laughs> So, we start off episode 1 with weird naked people in some sort of cosmic cave and a woman drinks water from a galaxy fountain? That cannot be sanitary. Their cave crumbles and they are outside and okay? Am I even watching the right show? The naked people's skin? Bark? Whatever it is, it peels off. And where did the clothes come from? I thought this was for mature audiences. So, show some boobs you cowards, we cut to little Mayu and Bonnie playing shadow puppets. Ever heard of an iPad? No, we're cousins. Whoa, what did she just say? I guess now is a good time to point out that early on I tried to watch this with subtitles off so I can get the feel of what it's like to be deaf, which sounds stupid, I know. Especially for two reasons. One. I didn't realise how much sign language was going to be in this show, which sounds even stupider when I hear that excuse out loud since the main character is deaf, and two, because I can't read sign language. Oh look, it's that guy from the Last of Us series, oh, I loved him in that. Too bad they made him kind of useless in this entire show. We see Maya's family, her grandparents, her dad and her mom, who is also deaf. I know this might be stupid to ask, but is deafness hereditary? What are the chances both mother and daughter are deaf? Oh, it's actually pretty common. And now they are in a car crash. Maya loses a leg and her mom is dead because their brakes were cut by a mysterious third party. Huh, I wonder who it could have been. The grandma hates the dad now as if he could have done anything about that car crash. And this dad, this dad by the way, he is the worst mafia member I have ever seen. Yes. Do that in the open, why don't you? Let everyone see this illegal transaction. Maya is seeing you do this from across the dojo and she's like five. We cut to the blip where Ronan, AKA Hawkeye, is killing mafia goons with a sword in New York City. Definitely won't trace back to him. One of the people killed is Maya's dad who leaves a bloody handprint on her face. Dad, you're ruining my makeup. But seriously, this was all shown in Hawkeye. Later, Maya goes on a crime spree and is trying to steal a bike from one of those dealership shops with an open view from the road. So anyone can see her doing this. The police show up and Maya attacks them with a the bike and she isn't shot at immediately, which shows some restraint from the cops, I guess. But she is handcuffed and Kingpin shows up and just takes her away with all these cops here. Look, I don't care if Kingpin has a hand in the police, but you're telling me not one of these cops are legit. All of them are corrupt. Really? Maya works for Kingpin now and is sent on a mission. She receives casual sexual harassment to show how tough it is to be a woman in this day and age. And then we have a eh, somewhat decent fight scene. It tries to be mostly one take with a few hidden cuts. They don't shy away from blood and gore and the music or lack thereof to show Maya's perspective is actually pretty cool. Daredevil shows up and this is where my praise ends. Daredevil is cool and all, but in this show he feels kind of uh, muted. <laughs> Get the pun? You know what I mean though, right? Like he's been watered down. Also, he's only in the show for like 30 seconds and that's it. So that's false advertisement right there. He should be way more experienced than Maya, but she goes toe to toe with him and even forces him to leave. Why? There is a montage of events that took place in Hawkeye, then we cut to five months later. After shooting Kingpin, I guess Maya is on the run and decides to go back to her hometown to fix herself up, which makes sense since she wouldn't be allowed in any hospitals anyway because she's a wanted person. 
Now remember that, she's a wanted criminal. Maya meets with Biscuits, Disney's 15th submissive, non-threatening male character who acts as a sidekick to the female main character and is stripped of any masculinity. Apparently, he is her cousin and they go way back but I swear I don't remember him in the intro. We see other characters like Henry, who is pretty cool, and Bonnie, all grown up now, but Maya doesn't want her to know that she is back in town. Finally, we find out that Henry is running a front for one of Bisque's operations, and that Maya wants to take over and send out a message to all his men. I won't bring a war here to the people I love and who love you. Why are you doing this? Cringe line, I know, but Henry has a point. Why is Maya so hell-bent on starting a war with Fisk's men, since she believes she already shot Fisk dead? Especially since this could spark a war in her hometown, why not hit another location? I'm pretty sure Fisk has operations all over the country, but she chooses to bring trouble to her hometown, where her family is. Just shows how compassionate she is as a character. And this is the moment it all clicks for me. The reason why, in the back of my mind, why I have not been able to connect with Maya as a hero is because she's not a hero. She's the villain. She's the literal villain of the story. And spoilers for later on in the video, but Maya doesn't get any nicer as a character. She starts as a ruthless killer under the influence of Wilson Fisk, but she ends as a ruthless killer, just not under the influence of Wilson Fisk. She doesn't go on a character arc realising that killing and revenge is wrong or anything basic like that, but I'll leave that for later. And it doesn't help that Maya is an unlikable character. She believes that she is entitled to run Fisk's whole operation. Why? She doesn't bring anything new to the table, she doesn't command an army or has vast connections in the criminal underworld and the little people she did lead were so incompetent in kidnapping a Kate Bishop who was barely even a vigilante at the time. Just because she went 30 seconds with Daredevil where he went easy on her, she believes that yeah, I could run this entire operation. Overall, episode 1 isn't offensively bad but could have been better and Kingpin's alive somehow. Episode 2 and 3 are both so lacklustre that it gave me visual whiplash from the first episode. And episode 1 wasn't even that good to begin with. I didn't really have that much to say about episode 2 and 3, so here's just a bunch of things that I noticed. We have a scene of Native Americans playing some sort of sport and one of them, a woman, this random woman, seems to gain a superpower passed down by the naked cave people. Biscuits is told to do something illegal by Maya and he weakly bends over backwards and obliges to her everywhere. If you are going to force me to do something illegal, I don't care if you're family, I am going to need a bigger band than this. Biscuits goes to grandpa's shop to attain the items needed for his illegal activity and that saw just works. I got two left. Step into the pond. Right off the shelves. Where, where's the safety? Grandpa, what kind of business are you running? Maya sneaks onto a train convoy and somehow gets under a moving train. She sneaks into one of the cargo and plants something. We don't know yet. Maya gets her prosthetic leg stuck and has a vision of the Native Americans from the beginning of the episode and now has superpowers? Biscuits panics that he loses track of Maya and it's dealt like a big issue. But dude, you know she's on a train. Just follow the train tracks. You can even see it on your phone. Maya gets a new prosthetic leg fixed by Gramps and showcases more of that trademark facial expressions that she is known for. The something Maya planted turns out to be a bomb made out from printer ink. What exactly is her plan here? Does she really want to take over Kingspin operation? If so, why is she destroying it and blowing up what she could have used for herself? Oh yeah, and we get this actually funny scene. starts kind of the same with another boring flashback that leaves you asking more questions like how come no one is shooting this girl when she is not in any cover whatsoever and what is the point of all of these scenes? Maya gets kidnapped, how nice of the kidnappers to not take away her prosthetic leg and give themselves more of a fighting chance when they know they are going up against someone who tried to kill Kingpin and went toe to toe with Daredevil. Henry is also kidnapped for some reason by Vicky. By the way, Vicky works for Henry 
so this whole kidnapping thing is kind of weird but he is also so bland you won't bat an eye when he's killed off bonnie shows up and henry tries to get her to leave with sign language which i am glad everyone kept learning and using even 20 years after maya the only person who seems to be deaf in this town left and had no intention of coming back bonnie and maya finally meet up again you would think this being a core relationship of the show would have maya emote in any sort of way but she's just too badass to and calling this a core relationship is a bit of a stretch because these two characters only interact maybe three more times later on in the show and then maya beats up some of the worst henchmen i have ever seen the action is uh, somewhat decent but it's just filler for a terribly boring story this show can't even get basic plot beats right there is no semblance of setup and payoff for example henry uses a fuse box to destabilize one of the men and that seems fun right like a callback to an earlier scene right but nope this fuse box being faulty enough to hurt someone was never established in any earlier episode or any earlier scene it wasn't even mentioned in an offhand comment little things like this makes it feel like this show had no plan whatsoever and just decided to do whatever it liked maya beats most of the men but is captured and about to be executed when baldy receives a mysterious phone call and just lets them go i wonder who the caller could have been grams gives maya a brace for her new prosthetic leg and it doesn't look tactical at all. Won't it get caught on her trousers when she tries to put them on? And Kingpin jump scare. Episode 4, in my opinion, is one of the most boring episodes in television I have watched in recent history. And that is probably the biggest crime with Echo as a whole. It's boring, it's bland, it's forgettable. It's not as bad as other terrible shows that are similar in concept, but at least we can enjoy to laugh at them for how bad they are and how absurd their concepts are. With Echo, we can't laugh at it because there's nothing to laugh at. Anyway, moving on. We see a flashback of Kingpin beating up an ice cream seller because he couldn't understand Maya and we find out that Maya has always been a bad guy. Also, apparently Kingpin is so evil, he would even kill off his only sign language translator to leave no witnesses. We cut to the present and Kingpin has shown up with his men. He reaches out and puts contacts in Maya's eyes. Easily, by the way, you know how hard it is to put contacts in when you are calm? But he just slips them in. Even though she's panicking and moving around like that, these contacts are a form of high-tech translators that can even translate sign language and turn speech into sign language. Don't think about it too hard. You wouldn't need these if, you know, you didn't kill off your only translator. Apparently, Kingpin only wants to chat and have dinner, even though she shot him in the face and tried to kill him the last time they met. During this entire scene, you would think that there would be tension building up to one of them attempting to kill the other, but no. It's just two villains having dinner. And I use the term villains loosely because this kingpin is a pale imitation of the kingpin from Daredevil. Poor Vincent D'Onofrio, she deserved so much better. Kingpin says he's not angry about her trying to kill him and wants Maya to join him back in New York so that she can have her own queendom, even though she tried to kill him and blow up his kingdom. Kingpin leaves and what a scumbag. They didn't even have dinner. I mean, what is this, cookies and soda? Maya meets up with Henry, telling him about Kingpin's offer and Henry says that Maya can't be that stupid to accept his offer. Kingpin apparently once gave Henry an offer and threatened to kill him if he ever left and Maya is surprised by this for some reason. I mean, I think she's supposed to be surprised, but hey, her I'm shocked face is eerily similar to her why do I care and bitch please face. But seriously? How is she surprised? How would she not know that this is one of his tactics with all those years she worked and killed people under Kingpin? Especially since she is apparently his closest ally. She was even there when he killed his only translator. Suddenly, Maya gets visions of the weird naked people the same time as her grandma and Henry forces her to go and see her. Her grandma basically tells Echo that she has always been amazing and so has many women in their bloodline. And Maya's mom was a healer. But she couldn't heal herself from that car crash though. <laughs> Maya storms out and confronts Kingpin, calling him a monster. But he calls her out that she is also a monster and Maya says no. 
Nothing is ever Maya's fault. She blames everyone else around her. It's all their fault, never hers. In a shock, shocking no one, Fisk killed his only father and gives the weapon he used to free himself to Maya so she can do the same. Maya doesn't kill him, not because she's a good person, but because she doesn't know what she wants. We don't even know what she wants. Does she want to destroy Kingpin's operation? Does she want to take it over? Does she even want to protect her family? She runs away and the episode ends with Fisk angry that Maya didn't take his offer. <sighs> Episode 5, where do I even start with this one? It turns out that Maya is a closet serial killer and this is way before Fisk even got to her. She shoots down an innocent bird and takes it to her mother, lying that it just fell. After lecturing Maya, the mom uses her BS healing powers to heal the bird. Why couldn't you have done that first and then lectured Maya instead of letting this poor creature suffer any longer? We cut to Maya at a diner out of town and she gets a message from Biscuit saying that Bonnie and Grandma are missing. Maya quickly gets up because she is scared that maybe Kingpin got to them. But you can't make me believe that this woman, that this character suddenly cares about her family because she didn't care about bringing a war to her hometown. You might say that maybe she's changed but literally 10 seconds before that she ignored Biscuit's first message asking about her well-being. So, she rushes home and sees a vision of her mom, who basically tells her the exact same thing her grandma told her yesterday, that she comes from a long line of special women. How is any of this happening? Anyway, this is how Maya gets her name, because she echoes her ancestors. Okay, if you say so. Honestly, it's actually a heartwarming scene. It's just a shame that it comes out of nowhere and doesn't feel earned. It feels like they just wanted a reason for her to wear her new suit. Meanwhile, Kingpin's men have infiltrated the Choctaw Pow Wow Festival and Maya has also snuck in. Maya sneaks into an abandoned area and finds Kingpin, revealing he does indeed have Bonnie and Grandma and a whole bunch of men surrounding Maya. And then, <laughs> then, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe what happens next, but, but hear me out. Then Maya somehow manages to give the powers of her ancestors to herself, Bonnie and Grandma, so they can all fight off Fisk men. By the way, none of the ancestors had powers in super fighting ability, so all of this is just bullshit. You're telling me this old woman can body this guy? Oh my god, this show has officially lost the plot. Well, it never had a plot to begin with. Anyway, Henry takes out Baldy, who is trying to blow up the festival goers, and Biscuits easily succumbs to the dark side by not even batting an eye when he does this. Kingpin is about to attack Maya, but she somehow manages to use her mom's ability and heal his mind? I, I don't even know anymore. He, he leaves and that's that. They won. Now, I am sure you have many questions. So do I. What even are Maya's powers? Is it supposed to be like one for all in My Hero Academia? What exactly did she do to Fisk? Is Fisk even evil anymore? How come no one is being arrested for the countless lives and property damage that took place in this show? Why did I watch this all the way to the end? Actually, I can't answer that last one. It's so I could find this abomination of an end credit scene with Kingpin thinking about running for mayor. All in all, this show is more boring than bad. I mean, who was this even made for? I thought she was supposed to be a more grounded character like Hawkeye or Daredevil with no powers and she is just really good at fighting even with a disability or two. The powers are really confusing as well and they ruin the little hope I had for this show to begin with. As for positives, I actually really enjoyed the sound mixing and music, especially whenever they showed it from Mike's perspective and the theme song actually slaps and it goes pretty hard with the visuals too. Thanks for watching the video, make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. Cola out. Oh,